Yo, what's going on people? It's your boy 8 Pancho back at you with a throwback case. So if you guys have never seen a throwback case before, it's a series I created where we take an in-depth look at some trials that have happened in the past that normally surround UK drill rappers or rappers in general. So if there is anyone that you want to see in a future throwback case, let me know down in the comment section below and I'll be sure to look into it. So RV is a UK drill rapper that comes out of Tottenham and North London. And I know the question on everyone's mind would be, well, where does the name RV come from? And if you've never heard him explain it before no the name doesn't mean recreation vehicle or rv for sure it actually comes from a man known by the name of rising football star godwin lawson who went by the name of revenge 24. godwin was assigned football player at oxford united football and education academy and in march of 2010 he decided to go back to london to visit his family and friends on the 27th of march 2010 he went to meet his childhood friends at brothers at the time 18 year old daniel bora and 20 year old Julian Bora. At around 1.50 a.m. they entered Amherst Park in Stamford Hill where the three were ambushed by a group of four males in balaclavas. It was said that initially the brothers were hit and when Godwin came to the aid of his friends he was stabbed once in the chest which resulted in his murder. Four men at the time, 22 year old Daniel Riley, 21 year old Matthew Lanihan and 20 year old Mosey Avora and Kofi Osma were charged over Godwin's murder and the attempted murder of the Bora brothers. After a trial at the Old Bailey in February of 2011, Mosey Avora was found guilty of the murder of Godwin but was cleared of the attempted murder charges on the brothers and all the others in the case were cleared of all charges brought against them. Mosey was sentenced to life in prison and was to serve a minimum of 19 years in prison before being considered for release. And so in Arvey's own words in an interview in 2013, he would go on to say that it was Godwin, aka Revenge24, who told him that he would be Young Rev, or for short, Young RV, and he told RV that if he was to die or go to jail, he would need to carry on the name, and that's when Young Rev, or for short, Young RV was born. I'm unsure as to an exact date Young RV started to make music, but the first documented videos on YouTube are from around 2010, and he was a part of the early 2000s rap group Star Gang which was a rap group which split off from the Tottenham Mendem gang. Young RV would dabble in various sounds, with road rap being the go-to type of music he was creating. The earliest song I can find on the internet would be Young RV and K-Man's song Cruddy on the Streets, which was released on the 14th of August 2010. Towards the end of the year, another song with K-Man would be released titled Kill or Be Killed, which dropped on the 30th of December 2010, and then one day later, at the end of the year, a Tottenham cipher was held, which involved Young RV, Heads, or as he's now known, Heady One, Tugsy and Delsa. At some point in 2010, RV would also go on to release a mixtape titled Cruddy on the Streets, although I can't pinpoint an exact date to when this was released. So the following year, that would be 2011, this is where young RV's career would really start to blossom in a way because his work rate had heightened and he'd got himself a decent catalogue of music. Some standout songs, ciphers and freestyles would be Star Gang Youngest from Farm, a freestyle featuring young RV, Tugsy and Super, Rose Red, Hometown, thinking trapped in the cycle he would also be involved in a grime cipher with gullyish blitz icon easy smiley and skylark bang for my set which would feature heady one moment for life in may of 2011 he was also involved in a link up with npk on the song farm to npk which featured himself blitz stretch legs and heads or heady one thinking part two real talk r.i.p fat man and rev 24 my lifestyle and he also had a song with stretch titled would stay frass. In October of 2011, he would also be involved in a wood green disc which features himself, Poppy, Shacavelli, Heady One, and Tugsy. In the same month, he would also release Slapped Off Your Jet Ski, which I don't believe is a sneak mode disc track, but throughout my research for this video, this is the first time I've heard RV use the phrase red card, which is frequently used in the drill scene, although people had been using this term for quite a while at this point. And then in November, he was involved in a cipher with Dundee, Desperado, Young H, Blitz, Kaz, Ray, and Frostar. Throughout 2011, I can't pinpoint an exact date, but he would also go on to drop a joint mixtape with Super Capone titled Antisocial Behaviour, and he was also featured on a mixtape titled Call of Duty Tottenham Warfare. Also in 2011, a situation was alleged to have happened on the roads with RV and Stretch from MPK. Due to this incident, Stretch would go on to release a diss track aimed at RV titled You're Not KOTS or Cruddy on the Streets, and, and this was an obvious play on RV's Cruddy on the Streets wave that he was riding at the time. The only direct response I can find from RV himself was an interview that was released in 2013, but I'm guessing the interview was recorded 
ended way before then, and he would go on to say that there was an ongoing police investigation surrounding that whole situation, and he didn't want to say anything that was going to incriminate himself. So after putting in a lot of work in 2011, RV was looking to have a decent 2012 and was looking to elevate his career that one step further, and he would do this when he released his first single, Still Standing Remix, which featured Dyson Sonical on the 1st of January 2012. On the 8th of January 2012, he would release a Chiba Freestyle with Young Mikes, and on the 21st of January, he would release a Stay Scheming remix titled Stay Squeezing with Dice, Super Capone and Impact. So things were really starting to heat up with RV and he was starting to get a decent buzz surrounding his name But that would all come to an end and at the time a young RV was looking at a lengthy prison sentence after he was wrapped up in a case At around 2pm on the 31st of January 2012, around 10 days after Stay Squeezing dropped It was reported that a 15 year old schoolboy had suffered multiple stab wounds whilst having his hair cut at Kenny's Barbers on Lordship Lane When emergency services arrived a short while later, the boy had to be airlifted to hospital to be treated for his injuries. A minicab driver told reporters how he had to stop a police patrol car after he saw the gang enter the barbers and he would go on to say, I saw about 10 boys walking down the road from the direction of Tottenham. They were shouting, they looked really aggressive and they had some kind of weapons on them. I saw them go to the barbers and run inside and I knew something was very wrong. They were inside for about a minute and ran out when they saw police. If I hadn't stopped the police, I'm not sure what would have happened to that boy. Witness to the scene, Gunny Togues, had told reporters that the boy was covered in a lot of blood and he was looking at himself in the mirror staring at his stab wounds. A trader from a nearby shop also witnessed the scene and he went on to say that the boy was bleeding in the chair quietly. He added he was enjoying the pain, that's what it looked like from his facial expressions. Police would then go on to arrest the group and around a day later, the victim's condition was updated to stable. Amongst the people arrested were at the time 18 year old RV, 19 year old Jerome Amakwa, three 17 year olds and a 16 year old and they would all go on to be charged with wounding with intent to cause grievous bodily harm. Alvi would also go on to be charged with possession of an offensive weapon and Jerome went on to be charged with possession of an offensive weapon and possession of a firearm. Jerome around this time had also been charged with violent disorder in relation to the Tottenham riots one year prior in 2011. He would later plead guilty to the violent disorder charge and was sentenced to 21 months in a young offenders institute so while Jerome had been sent sentenced for that charge he was now awaiting to see what would happen in this case. So I can't find in-depth details about this but it is believed that one of the people involved, namely a 17 year old, was acquitted of wounding with intent to cause grievous bodily harm at an earlier trial but he was handed an 18 month youth rehabilitation order after previously pleading guilty to possession of an offensive weapon, namely a knife. So that would leave RV, Jerome and now three 17 year olds to be put on trial over the stabbing because of course they went on to plead not guilty to the charges brought against them. In court, it was heard that the 15 year old school victim was sat in the barber's chair in Kenny's barber's shop on Lordship Lane when all of a sudden a group of males walked past the shop window. Then it was said that some of the group had forced their way into the shop and then the manager tried to hold the door closed to stop the others coming in. As the group outside shouted abuse and attempted to force entry, the gang members inside the shop then confronted the 15 year old boy and attacked him while he was in the barber's chair and left him with three stab wounds to the back before fleeing outside with the rest of the gang. It was then heard that the minicab driver who had flagged the police down was the one who had pointed them in the right direction and then from there it was chase on. The group split up but they were eventually arrested by police. When they were finally stopped they were searched by police and the police found weapons on them. In Jerome's possession he had a butterfly knife and CS spray which would have been the firearm because if you didn't know CS spray is actually classed as a firearm here in the UK. RV was found in possession of a lock knife and a 17 year old male was also found in possession of a knife. Officers also found a large kitchen knife discarded nearby. The knife which was found on RV was confirmed through forensic analysis to have the victim's blood on it and the prosecution went on to say that they believed that this was the weapon which inflicted the stab injuries. RV's clothing was also found to have the victim's blood on it. So after a trial at the Old Bailey on the 27th of July 2012, RV, Jerome and the three 17 year olds were all found guilty of wounding with intent to cause grievous bodily harm. On the 24th of August 2012, the group were then to be sentenced. On sentencing, Judge Lordship Jeffrey Nice QC said that the five defendants were all to be treated as equally involved. He also acknowledged that this was a gang related matter in which the victim decided not to cooperate. The judge went on to call the incident a daylight attack by a group armed with knives and went on to talk about the bravery of the shopkeeper. 
Carter. Jerome was then sentenced to six years in the Young Offenders Institute. He was also handed a six-month sentence to run concurrently for the CS spray he was found in possession of, and he was then handed another six-month sentence to run concurrently after being found in possession of a knife. RV was given seven years in the Young Offenders Institute for both the knife charge and the GBH charge. One of the 17-year-olds was handed a six-and-a-half-year jail term in the Young Offenders Institute for his involvement, while the other two were given six years and four years, respectively. After sentencing, Harangay Borough Commander Sandra Luby said, This prosecution illustrates the importance of the police and the public working together to tackle crime and it is only due to that we have secured these convictions. We are grateful to the members of the public that came forward and supported the investigation and to the passing Trojan unit that stopped when they were flagged down and secured the initial scene. She added, we are committed to reducing violent crime and to enforcing the law against those involved in gang crime and will continue to work with local partner agencies to support those that want to leave the gang lifestyle behind. So with RV serving time in jail a lot of people thought that this was the end for him but in 2014 he dropped a freestyle titled 014 freestyle where he talks about his time in jail and a small catch up with what's been going on with him over the past couple of years he also dropped a song titled job done and these two were said to have been planned to be put onto a mixtape which was supposed to drop when he was released from jail but due to unforeseen circumstances that never happened so i do believe rv would go on to be released from jail at some point in 2016 and would drop the young from his name where he would now go as RV. He would start riding the drill wave as soon as he touched out of prison because he would go on to release the song Virus featuring Cash on the 10th of August 2016 which would nearly be six years to the date where he went on to release his first music video that I could find on YouTube. He would also go on to release a fresh home freestyle on the 18th of October 2018 and would then release I Don't Need an Intro on the 28th of October 2016. Around this time Star Gang were now going under the name OFB and in 2016 also Heady one and RV linked up to drop a project titled Sticks and Stones which featured other OFB rappers on there and the streets were fucking with this one heavy so it was looking good for OFB but more specifically for Heady One and RV. In 2017, RV would continue his somewhat duo with Heady One as they would go on to release their legendary project, Drillers and Trappers, and would go on to release videos for various songs on the project. These videos would also include songs that weren't dropped on the tape. Some standout for 2017 would be RV, Heady One, and D1 do a mic check. The duo would then link up with Young Diz on the track Metro Boomin, 25 Bills, Mad About Bars Freestyle, A Black Box Freestyle, How Many. In June, RV, alongside other OFB members would be featured on a Tim Westwood crib session. The duo would then drop visuals for Assist, Jug, a behind bars freestyle, a Snoochie Shy freestyle. They would drop a song titled Badness with 86's T Muller. They would drop their legendary song Mad Max with Cash, Tugsy and Loki. Would drop Gangin, a hardest out freestyle on GRM. And the duo would then link up with other OFB members and would link up with Zone 2 in December of 2017 to drop a freestyle on Link Up TV. RV solo wise for 2017, I can only find a street heat. I'm guessing more music probably did drop solo wise, but I can't specifically find videos. So coming off a massive 2017, this would be leading up to a massive 2018 for the unofficial duo. And to start the year off, they would drop the visuals for the song Twinning. And then in January of 2018, something would happen to Heady One, which wouldn't only propel Heady One's rap career, it would also propel RV's career as well. Yes, as we all know by now, in January of 2018, Heady One had been caught lacking after it seemingly looked like a girl had lined him up, or just the fact that people were dropping the location was enough for rival gang members to pull up on him and in turn catch him lacking. Less than 24 hours after Heady One was caught lacking, it seemed as if a retaliation attack had happened because a 19 year old man had been shot. He was taken to hospital where he went on to recover from his injuries. It was thought to have been a retaliation attack though because on social media, OFB members had been making talk 
taunts about the situation. On top of this, Heady One would team up with RV to drop No Better, which addresses this whole situation. And this is where Drill fans really started to pay attention to what was going on with OFB if they hadn't already by this point. On a quick side note, on the same day that No Better dropped, another Tim Westwood crib session would drop again, which featured RV and other OFB members. In 2018, RV would also go on to release Fresh Prince of Tottenham, but amid all of his success, he would see himself in trouble with the law once again, but right now, I'm unsure as to the reasons why he ended up getting locked up again, but throughout 2018, he was spotted on Snapchat in jail. Well, Stormzy, free Stormzy. Where's he from? He's Jamaican. God, shat him. I don't know. Where's he from? He's Jamaican. God, shat him. I don't know. Why smoke a little posing like that, though? <laughs> <laughs> Why smoke a little Oh! But I stop, bro. What's wrong with you, man, fam? He's but cool. yeah, fucking. He knows, isn't it? He knows. Certain he men. Knows. Hey, chill, chill, He's chill. Claudia. Certain men. Mm. Claudia, yeah. He's I, I said that's a Wolverine's girl, though. In January of 2019, I do believe this is when he would go on to be released from jail, and he would drop brand new slash Why Always Me, where for the first time in years he would finally go back to being bait face and would take off his balaclava. In later interviews, he explains that this was a better business move for him personally, and in my personal opinion, I do then believe he became more brandable. Around this time as well, he was also banned from the Haringey Borough for roughly one year. So with a brand new RV with his mask off, it was time for him to get back on track with his music career and in March of 2019 he and Heady One would link up once again to drop Drillers and Trappers 2 in which he said he was spending 12 plus hours a day for two weeks straight to get the project finished and released. He would also go on to drop a project titled Savage in 2019 and for that project he said he wrote around 85% of the EP in jail so by the time it finally dropped the project felt super old to him. Some standout songs in 2019 would be Crep Shop with Bando K, Double L's and SJ, a feature on Crepton Conan's I Spy remix, Life I Live, His Fire in the Booth, Westwood Freestyle and Daily Duppy, and he would also go on to drop Hoodies and Gloves with LD, Young's Teflon and Flyo. As of 2020 though, he hasn't been very active of course, he was in a little back and forth with Tion Wayne, he dropped a couple songs such as Like Usher and of course he appeared on the On Deck remix, but with RV's track record of work rate, I wouldn't be surprised if we definitely see some more songs dropping before the end of the year. He did recently put out that he was on track 21 of Edna, which is Heady One's new project, and right now the album only has 20 songs on it, but Heady One has recently come out to say that a Deluxe version of Edna is dropping soon, so I would expect RV to be on the Deluxe edition. At some point in the future, I know he's got a project lined up as well called Re Von Dale, so be sure to check for that one when that one drops. But yeah, give this video a thumbs up if you like this series. Let me know what you guys think of this down in the comment section below. And if you want the latest drill, street, and music news out of the UK, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. It's been your boy Abe Hancho, and I'm out.